Come, let's read the Bible with Pat, part one. And we are going to study from the Gospel of Matthew. Okay, we are going to read through. Matthew wrote this book. Being a Jew, he wrote this Gospel to the Jews. Okay, and most of them who wrote these Gospels, who wrote these epistles, they actually really never understood that they were writing the epistles. They, were, they never knew that they were writing scripture. As the church started to increase, as the church started to grow, as the believers started to increase, the disciples or those who had first-hand information, they were beginning to decrease because of the persecution that was going on, because of the, you know, trouble that was taking place they were being killed so the necessity arose that all that they were teaching all that they were sharing that they put it in practice that was the main purpose that these gospels were written okay none of the writers knew they were writing scripture so let's go into the book of matthew the first book in the new testament thank you jesus the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Judah and his brothers. Judah begot Perez and Zerah by Tamar. Perez begot Ezron, and Ezron begot Ram. Ram begot Aminabad, and Aminabad begot Narshan. And Narshon begot Salmon. Salmon begot Bohas by Rahab. Bohas begot Obed by Ruth. And Obed begot Jesse. And Jesse begot David the king. David the king begot Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon begot Rehobiam. And Rehobiam begot Abijah, and Abijah begot Asa. Asa begot Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat begot Joram, and Joram begot Uzziah. Uzziah begot Jotham, and Jotham begot Ahaz, and Ahaz begot Ezekiah. Ezekiah begot Manasseh. Manasseh begot Ammon, and Ammon begot Josiah. Josiah begot Jeconiah and his brothers about the time they were carried away to Babylon. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconiah begot Sheltiel, and Sheltiel begot Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel begot Abiud, Abiud begot Eliakim. And Eliakim begot Azor. Azor begot Zadak. Zadak begot Achim. And Achim begot Eliud. Eliud begot Eliazah. Eliazah begot Mathan. And Mathan begot Jacob. Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations from David until the captivity in Babylon are 14 generations and from the captivity in Babylon until the Christ are 14 generations. Friends, Abra uh, Matthew being a Jew, he writes to a Jew and for a Jew to know the genealogy is very important. They would not accept anybody if you just go and if I'm just going to introduce myself and say I'm Patricia, they are not going to accept me. They want to know who's my father, who's my grandfather. At least three gen three of your ancestors they want to know. So that is why Matthew, when he writes to the Jew, he starts away with the genealogy of Jesus. They were expecting David, they were expecting from Abraham. And that is why he writes that. So to us it might think what a waste of time to have, you know, so much of names here. 
but to a Jew it's not a waste of time and Matthew was trying to show them from where Jesus came show them the very roots show them the Messiah that was coming through the promised line okay let's go on now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows after his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph before they came together she was found with child of the Holy Spirit that Joseph her husband being a just man and not wanting to make a public example was minded to put her away secretly but while he thought about these things behold an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying Joseph son of David do not be afraid to take to you Mary your wife for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit and she will bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins so all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying behold the virgin shall be with child and bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel which is translated God with us then Joseph being arose from sleep did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her till she brought forth a firstborn son and he called his name Jesus chapter 2 friends the gospel of John was not written in chapters or verses nobody writes a letter nobody writes a story in you know chapters and verses but just for us to understand for us to make it e for, for it to be easier for us okay the people who are concerned in compiling this Bible they put it in divide it in chapters and verses okay but it was just one you know story that was told the epistles was just a letter that was written okay so I just want to give you that information chapter 2 now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Errol the king behold wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying where is he who has been born king of the Jews for we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him when Herod the king heard this he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him and when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born so they said to him in Bethlehem of Judea for thus it is written by the prophets but you Bethlehem in the land of Judah are not the least among the rulers of Judah for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel then Errol when he has secretly called the wise men determined from them what time the star appeared and he sent them to Bethlehem and said go search carefully for the young child and when you have found him bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also when they heard the king they departed and behold the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was when they saw the star they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy and when they had come into the house they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him and when they had opened their treasures they presented to him gold frankincense and myrrh then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Errol they departed from their own country another way mm. now when they had departed behold an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream saying arise take the young child and his mother flee to Egypt and stay there until I bring you word for Errol will seek the young child to destroy him when he arose he took the young child with his mother by night and departed for Egypt and was there until the death of Errol that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophets saying out of Egypt I called my son then Errol when he saw that he was deceived the wise men was exceedingly angry and he sent forth and put to death all the male children 
who were in Bethlehem and in all its cities from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, A voice was heard in Rama, lamentation, weeping, great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted, because they are no more. Now when Aaron was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, a saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the young child's life are dead. Then he arose, took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Achilles was reigning over Judea instead of his father Errol, he was afraid to go there, and being warned by God in a dream, he turned aside into the region of Galilee. And when he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. Chapter 3 In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John himself was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locust and wild honey. Then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region around the Jordan went out to him, and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Brood of vipers, who want you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance, and do not think to say to yourself, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise children to Abraham from these stones. And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John cry, tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and are you coming to me? But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. For then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands 
they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone Jesus said to him it is written again you shall not tempt the lord your god again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory and he said to him all these things i will give you if you will fall down and worship me and jesus said to him away with you satan for it is written you shall worship the lord your god and him only you shall serve that the devil left him and behold angels came and ministered to him now when jesus heard that john had been put in prison he departed to galilee and leaving nazareth he came and dwelt in capernaum which is by the sea in the regions of zebulun and naphtali that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by isaiah the prophet said the land of zebulun and the land of naphtali by the way of the sea behold the jordan galilee of the gentiles the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light and upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death light has dawned from that time jesus began to preach and say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand and jesus walking by the sea of galilee saw two brothers simon called peter and andrew his brother casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen then he said to them follow me and i will make you fishers of men they immediately left their nets and followed him going on from there he saw two other brothers james the son of zebedee and john his brother in the boat with zebedee their father mending their nets he called them and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him and jesus went about all galilee teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people then his fame went throughout all syria and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various disease and torments and those who were demon possessed epileptics paralytics and he healed them great multitudes followed him from galilee from decapolis jerusalem judea and beyond the jordan friends you will see here in chapter 4 and verse 17 it says jesus was preaching the kingdom of heaven at hand when we read the other gospels we find they talk about the kingdom of god it is the same the only difference was the jews would not dare to use the name of god and that is why matthew writes to them and he does not use the word god and say kingdom of god but he says kingdom of heaven but gentiles okay that mark and luke were writing to and john writing to the early church they would use the word god and so that is why there you would find the, the phrase kingdom of god okay so let's go on to chapter 5 and seeing the multitudes he went up on a mountain and when he was seated his disciples came to him then he opened his mouth and taught them saying blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of god blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are you when they revive and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake 
rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you you are the salt of the earth but if the salt loses its flavor how shall it be seasoned it is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled under foot by men you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lamp stand and it gives light to all who are in the house let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven do not think that i came to destroy the law or the prophets i did not come to destroy but to fulfill for assuredly i say to you till heaven and earth pass away one jot or one little tittle shall by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven but whoever does and teaches them he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven for i say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of scribes and pharisees you will be by no means enter the kingdom of heaven you have heard that it was said to those of old you shall not murder and whoever murders will be in the danger of judgment but i say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment and whoever says to his brother raka shall be in danger of the council but whoever says you fool shall be in danger of hell fire therefore if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you leave your gift there before the altar and go your way first be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift agree with your adversary quickly while you are on the way with him lest your adversary deliver you to the judge the judge hand you over to the officer and you be thrown into prison as surely i say to you you will by no means get out of there till you have paid the last penny you have heard that it was said to those of old you shall not commit adultery but i say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart if your right eye causes you to sin pluck it out and cast it from you for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell and if your right hand causes you to sin cut it off and cast it from you for it will be more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell furthermore it was been said whoever divorces his wife let him give her a certificate of divorce but i say to you that whoever divorces his wife for any reason except sexual immorality causes her to commit adultery and whoever marries a woman who is divorced causes or commits adultery again you have heard that it was said to those of old you shall not swear falsely but shall perform your oaths to the lord but i say to you do not swear at all neither by heaven for it is god's throne nor by the earth for it is his footstool nor by jerusalem for it is the city of the great king nor shall you swear by your head because you cannot make one hair white or black but let your yes be yes and your no no for whatever is more than these is from the evil one you have heard that it was said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth but 
I tell you not to resist an evil person but whoever slaps you on your right cheek turn the other to him also if anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic let him have your cloak also and whoever compels you to go one mile go with him too give to him ask you and from him who wants to borrow from you do not turn away you have heard that it was said you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy but i say to you love your enemies bless those who curse you do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you that you may be sons of your father in heaven for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust for if you love those who love you what reward have you do not even the tax collectors do the same and if you greet your brethren only what do you do more than others do not even the tax collectors do the same therefore you shall be perfect just as your father in heaven is perfect take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them otherwise you have no reward from your father in heaven therefore when you do a charitable deed do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory from men i surely i say to you they have their reward but when you do a charitable deed do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing that your charitable deed may be in secret and your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly and when you pray you shall not be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men as surely i say to you you have had your reward but you when you pray go into your room and when you have shut your door pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly and when you pray do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do for they think that they will be heard for their many words therefore do not be like them your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him in this manner therefore pray our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts and we forgive our debtors and do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen for if you forgive men their trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you do not forgive men their trespasses neither will your father forgive you your trespasses moreover when you fast do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting i surely i say to you they have their reward but you when you fast anoint your head wash your face so that you do not appear to men to be fasting but your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is there your heart will be also the lamp of the body is the light if therefore your eye is good your whole body will be full of light but if your eye is bad your whole body will be full of darkness if therefore that light that is in you is darkness how great is that darkness no one can serve two masters 
for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other you cannot serve god and mammon therefore i say to you do not worry about your life what you will eat or what you will drink nor about your body what you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing look at the birds of the air for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into the barns yet your heavenly father feeds them are you not of more value than they which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature or why do you worry about clothing consider the lilies of the field how they grow they neither toil nor spin and yet i say to you that even solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these now if god so clothes the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven will he not much more clothe you or you of little faith therefore do not worry say what shall we eat what shall we drink or what shall we wear for after all these things the gentiles seek for your heavenly father knows that you need all these things but seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be given to you therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about its own things sufficient for the day is its own trouble friends as i said earlier the bible was not written in chapters and verses for example we started read- reading from verse from chapter 5 and saying and seen the multitude he went up to the mountain and he sat down and he started to teach them or talk to them we are still reading about that incident he is still sitting on the mountain and he is still sitting to his reading and he is still talking to his people two chapters are over we are on, going to study read the seventh chapter okay so this itself proves that you know it didn't stop there he didn't stop at chapter 6 it didn't cho- stop at chapter 5 he started and he is what he is talking they were just writing down the full conversation full incident full da- uh, speech of his okay so it was man who put in the man who tried to divide this bible make it easier for us to read he put in those chapters and verses okay let's continue chapter judge not that you may not be judged for with what judgment you judge you will be judged and with the measure that you use it will be measured back to you and why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye but do not consider the plank in your own eye how how can you say to your brother let me remove the speck from your eye and look a plank is in your own eye hypocrite first remove the plank from your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye do not give what is holy to the dogs nor cast your pearls before swine lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you in pieces ask it will be given to you seek and you will find knock and it will be opened to you for every one who asks receives and he who finds seeks and to him who knocks it will be open oh what man is there among you who if his son asks for bread will give him a stone or if he asks for a fish will he give him a serpent if you then be evil know how to give good gifts to your children How much more will your father who is in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him Therefore whatever you want men to do to you do also to them for this is the law and the prophets Enter by the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction and there are many who go in by it Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life and there are few who find it beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are religious wolves you will know them by their fruits do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles even so 
every good tree bears good fruit but a bad tree bears bad fruit a good tree cannot bear bad fruit nor can a bad tree bear good fruit every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire therefore by their fruits you will know them not everybody who says to me lord lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my father in heaven many will say to me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in your name cast out demons in your name and that many wonders in your name and then i will declare to them i never knew you depart from me you who practice lawlessness therefore whoever hears these words of mine and does them i will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rains descended the floods came the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended the floods came the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and great was its fall and so it was when jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes when he had when he had come down from the mountain great multitudes followed him and behold a leper came and worshiped him saying lord if you are willing you can make me clean then jesus put out his hand touched him saying i am willing be cleansed immediately his leprosy was cleansed and jesus said to him see that you tell no one but go your way show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that moses commanded as a testimony to them now when jesus had entered capernaum a centurion came to him pleading with him saying lord my servant is lying at home paralyzed dreadfully tormented and jesus said to him i will come and heal him the centurion answered and said lord i am not worthy that you should come under my roof but only speak a word and my servant shall be healed for i also am a man under authority having soldiers under me and i say to this one go and he goes and to another come and he comes and to my servant do this and he does it when jesus heard it he marveled and said to those who followed as surely i say to you i have not found such great faith not even in israel and i say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with abraham isaac jacob in the kingdom of heaven but the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth then jesus said to the centurion go your way and as you have believed so let it be done for you and his servant was healed that same hour now when jesus had come into peter's house he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever so he touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and served them when evening had come they brought to him many who were demon possessed and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by isaiah the prophet saying he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses and when jesus saw great multitudes about him he gave a command to depart to the other side then a certain scribe came and said to him teacher i will follow you wherever you go and jesus said to him foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head then another of his disciples said to him lord let me first go and bury my father but jesus said to him follow me and let the dead bury their own dead 
Now when he got into a boat, his disciples followed him. And suddenly a great tempest arose from the sea, so that the boat was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. Then his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. But he said to them, Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So the men marveled, saying, Who can this be, that even the winds and the sea obey him? When he had come to the other side, to the country of the Gerasenites, there met him two demon-possessed men coming out of the tomb, exceedingly fierce, so that no one could pass that way. And suddenly they cried out, saying, What shall we do with you, Jesus? You son of God, have you come here to torment us before the time? Now a good way off from there was a herd of many swine feeding. So the demons begged him saying, If you cast us out, permit us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said to them, Go. So when they had come out, they went into the herd of swine. And suddenly the whole herd of the swine ran violently down the steep place into the sea and perished in the water. Then those who kept them fled and they went away into the city and told everything including what had happened to the demon-possessed men. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they begged him to depart from there. So he got into a boat, crossed over and came to his own city. Then behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven you. And at once some of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemes. But Jesus, seeing or knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you? Or to say, Arise and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on the earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, Arise, take up your bed, go to your house. And when he arose and departed to his house, now, when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, who had given such power to men. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew, sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, Follow me. So he rose and followed him. Now it happened, as Jesus sat at the table in the house, that behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Then Jesus heard this. He said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Then the disciples of John came to him saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, Can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment but the patch pulls away from the garment and the tear is made worse nor do they put new wine into old wineskins or else the wineskins break the wine is spilled and the wineskins are ruined but they put new wine into new wineskins and both are preserved while he spoke these things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshipped him, saying, My daughter has died, 
but come and lay your hand on her and she will live so jesus arose and followed him and so did his disciples and suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment for she said to herself if only i may touch his garment i shall be made well but jesus turned around and when he saw her, he said be of good cheer daughter your faith has made you well and the woman was made well from that hour when jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the noisy crowd wailing he said to them make room for the girl is not dead but sleeping and they ridiculed him but when the crowd was put outside he went in and took her by the hand and the girl arose and the report of this went out into all that land when jesus departed from there two blind men followed him crying out and saying son of david have mercy on us and when he had come into the house the blind men came to him and jesus said to them believe that i am able to do this then they said yes lord then he touched their eyes saying according to your faith let it be to you and their eyes were open and jesus sternly warned them saying see that no one knows it but when they had departed they spread the news about him in all that country and as they went out behold they brought to him a man mute and demon possessed and when the demon was cast out the mute spoke and the multitudes marvel say it was never seen like this in israel but the pharisee said he cast out demons by the ruler of the demons then jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people but when he saw the multitudes he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd then he said to his disciples the harvest is truly plentiful but the laborers are few therefore pray the lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest chapter 10 I'm reading from New King James Version. And when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Now the names of the 12 apostles are these. First Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bethlehemy Thomas and Matthew the tax collector James the son of Alphaeus and Lebius whose surname was Thaddeus Simon the Canaanite and Judas Iscariot who also betrayed him these 12 Jesus sent out and commanded them saying do not go into the way of the gentiles and do not enter the city of the samaritans but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of israel and as you go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out demons freely you have received freely give provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belts nor bag for your journey nor two tunics nor sandals nor staff for a worker is worthy of his food now whatever city or town you enter inquire who in it is worthy and stay there till you go out and when you go into the household greet it if the household is worthy let your peace come upon it but if it is not worthy let your peace return to you and whoever will not receive you no hear your words when you depart from that house or city shake off the dust from your feet as surely i say to you it will be more tolerable for the land of sodom and gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city 
Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in the synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake, as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you shall speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you. Now brother will de deliver up brother to death, and father is child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in the city, flee to another. For assuredly I say to you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house, Belzebub, how much more will they call those of his household? Therefore do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light, and what you hear in the ear, preach it on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from your master's will. But the very hair of your head are all numbered. Do not fear therefore, you are of more value than the sparrows. Therefore whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to be priest but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against a mother, and a daughter-in-law against a mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. And he who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. He who receives you receives me. And he who receives me, receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet, in the name of a prophet, shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man, in the name of a righteous man, shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water, in the name of a disciple, I surely I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. We worship you, we praise you, we glorify you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you that you, Father, were so loving to share your thoughts with us, Lord. Father God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord. A relationship grows when there is good communication, Lord. And Lord, our relationship as a child and as a father, it's able, it has the every potential to grow because we have your thoughts here that we can read and understand you and communicate with you under the rise of understanding be open and enlightened to understand your word as we read it lord in jesus mighty name we pray father amen